the bell is ready. And now, as you can see, it is time to go do some raiding. So if you get at this message, the bell is ready. That does not mean you can go fight Vermilion, which is over at the vampire castle over there. This is for raiding in the savannah, which may get you a lot of good items. What we are looking for is not the Katana Divine, but the Orcor weapons. And I will show you how to raid. Orcor's Evil Blade is the first one. This is one of his drops, and the other is Orcor's Evil Dagger. Both of these are ultimate tier, so they are very hard to get. And Orcor by himself is pretty hard. So as I said in the beginning, we are going to want to go to the savannah. I am right near the forest in Cubit, which is right over there. Over there is the vampire town. Over there is the forest it in. About over there is where you fight Ama. And over there is where Princess Twix is. And yes, this is a blood moon. So we are going right down to the last cubit right over here, which you have to get via boat. There is no other way to reach the savannah unless you have a boat. So after this is done loading and the lag spike from loading is gone. This should not take that long. We are going to go over here. Raids may occur naturally, but there is one way to get raids. Which is right over here. The bell. And now as you can see the orc crystal spawns. This will be important. All the orcs you will not be able to interact with besides from some certain orcs. See as you can see orc orc is not letting me access his shop. I'm pretty sure you can also interact with the Orc Chief here. Yes. And as the raid starts, as you can see, you cannot interact with Orcs and make Orcs. So we are in a raid now. What do you notice? Enemies. Lots of them. I might go equip my bear summon for this. Because this will clear some of the enemies easier. Also, as you can see, once the health bar reaches half, we get a little notification on where the enemies are. But once we clear most of the enemies from around the crystal, as I said before, we are looking for Orkor, the traitor. You can interact with some of the orcs, but not much. The raid has a second part where more enemies will spawn, but... Orcor can spawn at the first part of the raid. He can spawn on wave one and he will give you schematics. He'll just silver ink it right there. Those are one of the things that you need to buy rough leather to use the schematics. To get the schematics, you need to do some of the orc quests right over there. Now, as you can see, there are two orcs right here. This is an orc and bridge orc. But what do we have right here? Orkin dot 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 question mark. If you interact with him, he will have dialogue. Here's the next, it just closes out. But here's the high orc or. This will lead you into a teleporter to the boss fight, which I will be showing you all. I will mainly just be using my, really all my weapons, not much are pretty good. 
you get teleported to the Dark Church where you fight Ama, the Chancellor. One of his attacks is a parry, so I suggest not going up front and attacking him. Just keeping your distance. Like that. That is the parry. Gosh, this guy's a hard fight. He's not that hard, but just pretty tedious. I suggest to get on a mount. Let's just let my mount do the work. And pray that we do not get hit by one of his attacks. This should not take a while. I still do not know why he has this type of music. This does not fit Orcor at all. And now, once he is dead... You can see he drops a chest. Also, the pillagers has the dot rating. And we got the schematic. He can drop a Vuvuzuela schematic, which is a summoning weapon, which allows you to summon an oracle. To your advantage. I do not think the raid complete. Yeah, no drops. When you complete a raid, there will be a chest with some drops here, one of which is a Savior Orkin's Magical Blade. I have not got it myself, but it is one of the best magic weapons in the game. And yeah, that's all you really need to know. If we go to my armors and things, we can just scroll down and, as you can see, two Vuvuzela schematics. Or Vuvuzela. Then, rough armor schematic. This is for rough armor, as you can tell. Pillager silver ingots, you can turn these into silver ingots. And rough leather, which we have got from Bearhead, if you have watched that video. Lag spike for some reason. If we return over to Orkin, we can go to crafting, and as you can see, I have all of the crafting recipes unlocked, but I cannot craft them. I am still missing a lot of Orkin runes, which are the Draco Worm's Breath, the Tactical Powered Sniper, the Stalactite Chain Gun, the Powered Shooter, the Axe of the Grand Orkin, the Great Orkin's Ultra Sword, the Vuvuzela, which we have got the schematic for, and the Rough Armor. And that's all. Nothing much. And that's really all. After you complete a raid, you will get a discount on most items. I'm not sure what the schematics are, but some of the schematics for 1 million are 600,000 after you complete a raid. Which is amazing. And yeah, that's pretty much all. We can do some quick exploring. Also, if you know you're going to get a raid soon or want to do a raid, you can go over here to Oryx McOryx. I've already done one of his quests.
And if you follow my path, over here, you will be able to complete the quest without needing a raid. There will be lots of pillagers over here. And... Can't jump because I'm out of stamina. There is the pillager leader, who I'm not sure if he has a drop. I have not got it. You can fight him with my katana the divine. He doesn't drop that much, but he is used for a quest. And you can return the quest back here. If I'm not mistaken, you get 10,000 gold and 800 experience for a quest, but you can only turn them in once per day. And with my radiance, speed boost. Also, from completing some of the quests from the orc, you can get a lot of different items for a good build. And, quest completed. I hope that helped. The bell has a cooldown time. I am not sure how long the cool time is, but it's pretty much at least, you can pretty much guarantee a raid with it being in a server for at least... I'd say about three or four in-game day and night cycle. And yes, the raids can occur and happen naturally. I do not know what the percentage is, but they can occur. And you will still get all the jobs, and Orkin will spawn. Orkin has 12 different spawn locations, only a seven of which are documented the last time I checked on the wiki. None of the orcs will mention Orc or spawning somewhere. But he will always spawn. It's a 100% chance to, for him to spawn in at least one of his 12 spots. Hope this guide helped. If you want anything that I can show you with a guide, comment and I will make a guide on that. If not, till next time. Peace. Have a nice rest of your day. Or night.